around the Hawaiian Islands. Six Japanese carriers are posed 250 miles north of the islands. At 0620 Hawaiian time, the first of 350 airplanes of the Japanese strike force climb into the pre-dawn darkness and begin their fateful journey to their unsuspecting targets. They use the Honolulu radio station playing popular songs to guide themselves to their targets. As the airplanes approach, operators at a Pona radar station spot the strike force and report it to their superiors. The officer in charge mistakes the strike force for a flight of B-17s arriving from the U.S. mainland. No report is made. At 0753, Lieutenant Masia Pachita keys his radio and issues those now famous words, Tora, 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 signifying the Japanese have achieved complete surprise. Meanwhile, the soldiers and sailors on Oahu have no idea what is happening. Now, look to your left. Imagine yourself on Pearl Harbor trying to identify those. And it's December 7th, 1941, and you are there! Try to imagine your confusion as the first bombs explode, the first sirens and alarms sound. Right now, right now, right here, listen to the sounds of battle. Feel the explosions, hammer your chest. Smell the smoke and it burns your nose, just as they did on that fateful day. The Japanese planes attack relentlessly. Many servicemen believe the attack is some kind of air raid drill. They think the airplanes are American. In fact, one soldier remarks, this is the best day crew the M-2 has ever put on. But when the rising sun becomes visible on the wings of the airplane, everyone knows this is no drill. General Short, the commander of Army Forces, is notified of the attack while playing golf. In response, that is ridiculous. General Short will win. Could have been right, but he has never been more wrong. The highly coordinated attack goes off like clockwork. At 0755, bombers attack Wheeler and Hickam Air Force Base. Two minutes later, the torpedo plane, just like the one you see before you today, attacks the battleship on Battleship Road. Completely out of control. Yeah, please attach. 
forms over Hawaii at 0855. 132 airplanes spread out to hit ships, airfields, and barracks throughout the world. The bomb hits the destroyer down while she sits in dry dock. Another strikes the commander of naval forces at her husband E. Kimmel's flagship, the battleship Pennsylvania, which is in dry dock, detonating guns and ammunition. Dive bombers attack the Raleigh, which has already been hit by torpedoes. One bomb misses the ship's fuel tank and fires their feet. The battleship Tennessee takes two bombs to sink. The bomb passes to the dock alongside the crew. It explodes underwater, flooding part of the ship and damaging her oil tank. A large explosion of the battleship gas causes her to roll over onto the down. The flames on the West Virginia now reach as high as the foresail. But, this time, for the second wave, the element of surprise is gone, and the Americans fight back, taking the Japanese bay in Britain some damage of their own. The day has numerous stories of heroism. The Nevada, on the south of the Four Islands, fired in the after the attack begins, and although her captain and senior officer are not on board, Lieutenant Commander J.F. Thomas ignores his look Thank you. 
refused to allow democracy to be threatened. This nation stood strong in the face of adversity, and this nation prevailed. This was not the first time Americans have been threatened, challenged, or tested, but it will not be the last. Right now, as we enjoy this wonderful day, our sons, daughters, husbands, our wives, uncles, and cousins, our countrymen, are defending America in far-off lands, sacrificing so we might enjoy the lasting tradition of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We must never forget those who have given their lives to make sure America stays strong, America stays free. Please remember those brave young men who have sacrificed. I would ask that when you see a serviceman or woman, go up to them, shake their hand and say, we are proud of what you do and we are proud of our country. But this is not a story just about them. It's about each and every one of you listening today. We are part of the greatest nation in the world. If you don't believe that, you're wrong. Houston, put your hands together and show me we believe we're the greatest nation in the world. Take this moment to savor what we do and what we are. We will stop from spectators to our own destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to thank our pilots, Jim Ryan, Bill Spear, Dan Reedy, Patrick Hutchins, Pat McClure, Rob White, Mark Allen, Bob Covington, Charles Hutchins, Mike Anderson, Billy Parker, Rick Hutain, and in his first flight, Bill Terrell. Out on the pilot field, Gordon Webb, ladies and gentlemen, be safe, be prosperous, but most important, be proud to be an American. I am Roger Gallon, and we are Torah, Torah, Torah. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a huge round of applause to Roger Gower and the entire staff, flyers, and crew of Torah, Torah, Torah including the 6th Cavalry Historical Association working on the ground today. Let's hear it for Tora Tora Tora, everybody! We just launched the B-25 Mitchell bomber.